Humanity. Humanity is like an ocean. If a few drops of the ocean are dirty, the ocean does not become dirty. Welcome back to another episode of Uncut Civilization 6. We've gone ahead a couple of turns, but not too much has changed. We've just been doing a little bit of housekeeping worth the day-to-day -day operations of running an empire. Nothing too fancy. But uh, one thing that has been bothering me for a significant number of turns is this this farm right here. If, if you can't tell, if you're not looking at the screen, if you're just listening and not watching, this farm is on fire. And it's been on fire for about a hundred years, and I'm going to put out the fire, finally. Boom. The fire's been put out. But I still, I still hear a burning noise. And I don't know where it's coming from. And that, that's, that's very, very uncomfortable. So, what I'm gonna do... Is, I'm going to turn off my game sound effects right now. Because I cannot deal with that fire noise, or at least I'm gonna turn them really, really low. Um, that 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 farm has been like there's been like a crackling, burning sound for the last hour and a half uh, for for the whole time I've been playing Civ, and I can't deal with it anymore. So let's get into it. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. So the plan now, right? We're going for a domination victory. We're trying to take over the world. How does one take over the world? Well, you need a strong military. How does one get a strong military? You research new weapons. As you can see, we just finished researching the field cannon. We're, we're on track to finish researching military science, which unlocks the cavalry unit, a fast-moving industrial era light cavalry. We also finished printing and siege tactics. We're, we're, we're well on our way to, to being a scientifically advanced civilization. We, we've, we finally surpassed Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> We're leaving him in the dust there was a while when, when he was keeping up with us, but our conquest is putting us further ahead. But what we really need is this stuff right here in the modern era. We need artillery. We need infantry. So we need a considerable amount of science to do that, and we've got to go through a lot of research to do that. But uh, so how, how are we going to get there? How are we going to speed up this process? Well, it's, gonna, it's only going to take one, six... Uh, 6 plus 15, 15 turns to get to steel, which will unlock artillery. And then another uh, 7 plus 5 is 12. And So it's going to take us 27 turns to get rifle, infantry, and artillery ready. But I want it to be a little faster than that. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going through all my cities. I'm trying to get my amenities sorted out. I'm trying to get all my cities up to at least zero amenities so they're positive. I have a policy equipped at the moment where having a garrisoned unit gives me and Where the hell is it? Yeah, here we go. Uh, conscription, having a garrisoned unit gives us plus one amenity. So I'm putting scouts in all of my cities. Uh, I'm also a new building that I have courtesy of the Civ Improvements mod is the hospital. I'm building that in cities as well. It gives us one housing, plus two food, and plus three science. So that's nice. Um, and I'm also working on the develop housing infrastructure as well. So that, it sacrifices one population, but it gives you two housing. And, and that's very valuable. So if we can get all of our cities to stabilize, then we will be in a very, very good place. So... Uh, hospitals are pretty expensive too. It's, uh, it's 530 gold, but I, I have enough at the moment. I may as well use the, the fact that I'm kind of bankrolling Germany at the moment, uh, to my advantage. I'm, I'm bringing in 321 gold per turn. So I'm going to buy a hospital in Riceland, my capital city, and also queue up, develop housing infrastructure. And then fish city, I'm going to keep fish city on, on the normal production path. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to spend all my money now. I don't want to get crazy with it that's how, that's how you go broke you spend too much money too quickly um and then just got to make sure to get the scouts properly garrisoned in all the cities so that our amenities just they, they balance out a little bit uh and just purchase one more scout and if you take a look uh, take a look if you look at the uh the civic research we're going for i, I can't i don't even remember if i said this already because I haven't had breakfast yet. I really got to stop doing that. But the the Enlightenment is the next research that we're going for, which when we successfully get it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a delicious policy to have. There's a whole bunch of stuff. We'll, we'll read it when the time comes. But uh, 
As for the city of Colony, go ahead and get that scout garrisoned and then queue up production for another hospital. So yeah, a, a lot of stuff is uh, a lot of stuff is going on. The city of Akin still has a couple of things left to repair, so we're going to continue repairing those things. Uh, and Japan, you'll notice that they have uh, the stars above their units, and what that means is that is an army or a corp. Uh, a corp is two star, an army is three star, and that just means it's more powerful than a standard unit. So I'm not concerned with attacking them at the moment. I'm just going to keep my units uh, fortified and pew pew at them with my cannonballs until I'm actually ready to push them out, which will be in a significant number of turns. But but still, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not making any attacks until I'm good and ready to. I, and and I, I, most, I, I most certainly don't have to because I have this chaplain here who gives us extra healing. So all of these units that are fortified, they're getting that healing back from the fortification. And they're getting a bonus because of the chaplain. So we're in a very solid position defensively. We don't have to stress about anything. Things are looking up for us. Things are looking very good for us. I keep getting heathen conversion with all of my apostles, but that's fine. The blue, my religion, is successfully spreading. And I was making a mistake at one point. Uh, when you train an apostle or a missionary or an inquisitor at a city that is from a different religion, what happens is that the apostle that you produce in that city follows the religion of the city that, was, that it was produced from. So this apostle is Catholic. And I was spreading Catholicism to cities that I wanted to be Catholic. I mean... <laughs> I was spreading Catholicism to cities that I didn't want Catholicism in. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm having to backtrack a little bit, which is unfortunate. And another thing that was a problem for me is I trained a couple of Inquisitors from Berlin, which is for now a Catholic city. And that just meant uh, every time I killed some of Gandhi's missionaries, as you can see, there aren't. There aren't many of them left. Uh, every, every time I killed them, I was furthering the cause of Catholicism instead of the cause of my own religion. So I, I've, I've fixed that. I've seen the folly of my ways, and we're, we're in a better spot now. So let's uh, let's get let's get on on with this defense. Uh, Japan, they, they're 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 not going to make any headway. I, I can guarantee that they're they're trying to push into my cities, but it's just not going to work for them. It's just not going to work. Uh, so let's just uh, finish up this little bit of stuff, and then we'll go ahead and go, go to the next turn. Hey, the plan is working. Japan is just throwing bodies at my units, and they're successfully defending. Unfortunately, up here, I'm going to have to be a little bit more aggressive because of these crossbowmen. Uh, I can't, you know... You know, they're, they're pew pew in my units, and my units aren't getting any damage out on them at the same time. But that's okay, though. That's okay. Demand? Get the fuck out of here, Gandhi. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're making a demand for chocolate and some money. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ridiculous. What, are you going to declare war on me like everybody else? I'll stop him, too. I will fight everybody in this motherfucker right now. Say I won't do it. Say I won't fight with. Say I won't declare war on every single civilization in the game right now. Cause I will. You best believe it. All right. Um. Anyway. <laughs> However beautiful the strategy, you should occasionally look at the results. Hmm. Winston Churchill giving us some good advice in this. Uh, in this uh, trying time. You know, if I'm not careful, if I'm not paying enough attention to the results of uh, my strategy. You know, people going to start dying. Uh, yeah, who cares? All right, anyway. Anyway, we get th th there's, there's so much clicking to do, man. There's so, so very much clicking to do. Uh, it, it feels like I'm a little bit overwhelmed with what's going on at the moment. Because there is so much to do. But, it, but it, it's okay. I just, I just need to sort of refocus. I need to, to refocus and, and, and take it take it one building at a time. Take it one one click at a time as opposed to overwhelming myself. So Rogel Dorn, their housing capacity has jumped up to twenty. 
so we can turn their focus back to something else. I could build a military academy. Don't uh, it gives housing too, but I don't I don't need it just yet. It only takes three turns. I'm gonna just uh, go for campus research on there, uh, and then pretty soon I'll start churning out uh, a bunch of military units and stuff. You know what, man? The, I guess the, the other thing that, that, that we could talk about today is, is Dawn of War 3. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fun game. It's, it's a lot of fun. The, 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 story, the, the lore of Dawn of War 3 is incredibly fascinating. I'm never going to take the time to learn all of it. I read about some of it just because it's, uh, it's always nice to have some sort of attachment to the, to the game world that you're playing in. Uh, and for Fish City, what's going on in Fish City? Population is looking a little bit low, uh, 16 out of 18. If we get that up a bit, we can build an entertainment complex somewhere. So why don't we develop their housing infrastructure and purchase a hospital? Boom. Um, so it, it, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm never going to learn all of the lore for, uh, for that game and for that universe because it's just too much. But the the little bits of it I have learned about it are interesting. Being perfectly honest, it's not it's not my favorite uh, science fiction out there. It's it's um how do I put this? How do I put it? It's it's a bit much, right? It's 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 a bit over the top for me. And and like like here's the thing, right? The concept is that there are these three factions. There's the humans, also known as the Space Marines. There are the Eldar, and there are the Orcs. And they're all in a pet perpetual state of war with one another. Cool. I can get behind that. But then there's, there's certain nitty-gritty details when you start diving into more of the history of the factions and stuff where it starts getting real weird, right? So it's it's I think it's I I think the reason it's called Warhammer 40K is because it's 40,000 years into the future, which clever makes sense, right? So I can get behind that, but th there's there's little things that I can't get behind that easily, and and one of the things that's just kind of creepy is that at at some point in in human history, we got rid of all the presidents and all the nations and stuff, and we just elected to have. Uh, the Emperor of Mankind, which, all right, cool. I, I can kind of get behind that. I can, I can get behind that we have just one leader that rules all of humanity. That's kind of cool. But where it starts to get weird is that he died and he's immortal now because he sits on the, quote, golden throne that is sustaining him. That He's basically a brain in, in a jar, kind of like Richard Nixon in Futurama. And now... All of humanity interprets the will of this brain in a jar, and we do. St and, 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 you see what I'm saying? It's, it's like it's, it's a little bit out of control for me. Uh, it's it's cool, but it's just like all right, all right, guys. You had me until you said the emperor of man is being sustained in a golden throne, and he's just a brain in a jar. Now you lost me. You've gone way too far to the left. And I can't get behind it. <laughs> like, like is, is, is cool, but it's just weird. It's just weird for me. Um, but, but I like it a lot, though. I, I like the game. I like Dawn of War three, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, to playing it uh, more and, and, get, and getting better at it. Uh, but I don't know how much of the lore I'll be reading and and, and how much I'll be interested in it. Uh, just because it's, it's it's just a little bit weird, and and you know that's not even to say that any of the stuff that I watch isn't weird, uh, be, because it, it most certainly is. Uh, Star Trek is weird. Uh, Halo, in in some regards, is weird. Hey, for anybody that doesn't play Halo, it is a game about a bunch of religious aliens trying to activate super weapons all over the galaxy because they believe those super weapons are religious artifacts that will propel them into the next realm of existence what and then the 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 spartans like master chief the the premise behind them is that once upon a time there was this old lady that wanted to make super soldiers to advance humanity so she goes around abducting a bunch of children and then aliens come and she's like well i got a bunch of child soldiers that are super strong i'll send them after the aliens and what is <laughs> you see what i'm getting at like 
when when I say that 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 the uh, the lore behind Dawn of War is weird, I say that understanding that the lore behind all of the science fiction that I watch is incredibly weird as well. Uh, right, this is a Catholic apostle. You know what? Fucking delete him. There you go. Um, <laughs> let's go to the next turn. So yeah, it's it's uh, and, and I suppose it all depends on on when you get introduced to something that determines whether or not it's weird or whether or not it's normal. Spread religion, boom. Like these these turns take forever because there's so many units to control now. Yeah, you know, like I got introduced to Star Trek and Halo when I was very young, so it was a little bit easier for me to get behind the whole idea of a religious cult of aliens is trying to activate. Uh, a thing to to set off their transcendent journey into the next realm right and and same goes for star trek with uh you know the vulcans and the mind melding and the 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 klingons and the romulans and the cardassians and all the other aliens and whatnot it's a little bit easier to get behind because i was younger when i was first introduced to them but now i'm 24 years old and i get introduced to the emperor of man sitting in a chair with his brain in a jar just twiddling his non-existent thumbs. And, you know, it's a little bit crazy. It just seems a little bit crazy. <laughs> but it, it's cool, though. It's, it's, it's very cool. Um, but it is, uh, and, and, and it's interesting, the followings for, for all of these, these different science fiction things, uh, and even for stuff that isn't science fiction, but more so for science fiction, it's, it's like a cult. It, it really is like a cult. And... You know, and entering into that world for the first time can be very intimidating, right? Uh, and w w one of the biggest complaints that I've seen in Dawn of War is very petty, and it's something that only a, a member of the cult will understand. Now, the, and I'm gonna break it down for, for anybody that doesn't play Dawn of War. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm gonna break it down for you. There's a character named Gabriel Angelos. Gabriel Angelos, and he's 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 a big, he's like a he's like he's like a ten foot tall space marine in a very big suit of armor, powerful guy, tough guy, and in Dawn of War three, he's got a lot of cool abilities that allow him to jump around and do backflips and all types of craziness, and one of the biggest complaints that I see from from avid fans of the game and the genre. Why the hell is Gabriel Angelos able to jump around while he's wearing Terminator armor? I do not comprehend. Does not compute. And... Like, I, I, I get it. I get why people are upset about that. Um, where's my Inquisitor? I had an Inquisitor somewhere. Here he is. I'm going to try and use this Inquisitor the right way to purge the heresy from... Uh, from Akin, which I believe will eliminate the other religion that is there. If it doesn't work, I've got a bunch of apostles nearby, and they will all use their spread charges to, to get rid of the religion anyway. But I want to see if I can just get rid of it in one shot with, uh, with an Inquisitor. All right, so uh, anyway, you got a promotion. Boom. 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 I guess I can go ahead and kill that crossbowman uh, in, in, a, in a couple turns. Yeah, that don't work. Uh, so, so yeah, um, th th that's one of the, the major complaints about the game is that, that the, 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 the big guy, Gabriel Angelos, he's jumping around doing backflips and shit, and it don't make no damn sense. Uh, but for me, as an outsider... I look at that and I say, "Well, it's kind of cool. He's 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 kind of like a master chief, only like a little bit taller." Uh, but to to fans and to people that have been you know following Dawn of War for years, and they're like, "Dude, I know, I know my boy Gabriel. He he can't do backflips in that armor. That armor is heavy as fuck. What you mean he doing backflips? Don't make no sense." And but the, but that happens in every science fiction in every cult out there when something changes that you don't like that isn't part of the the norm that you've become used to you, you try to rebel against it in halo for example oh my god there's anti-tank crews over here that are barbarians i could convert them 
I got to find out what's going on over here so I can convert these barbarians. But anyway, uh, in, in, whenever something changes that's not, you know, part of the norm of your cult, you, you look at it with hostility. And, and for me, I can look towards uh, Halo, for example. I can look to, towards Star Trek as an example. Uh, and and I'll, I'll, I'll use Halo just because it's the, the one that I, I've, I have a little bit more uh, memory of it at the moment. But uh, the uh, w- one of the aliens in Halo, they're called elites. And there was a point in time where they were all skinny and really sleek looking. And a lot of the design decisions in the newer Halo games, Halo 4 and 5, they made them kind of fat. And a lot of fans of the series don't like that new approach to things. They don't like their fat aliens. We, we, we want skinny, sleek, you know... Uh, heroic looking aliens we don't want these chunky monkeys running around you know doing stuff all right let's remove the heresy boom hey look at that it works okay uh this is great this is fantastic holy shit man this is out of control there's too many units there's just too many units on the field so yeah, so so yeah, I, I say all that to say I I totally get where the complaints about certain things in in Dawn of War come from from a lore perspective because I complain about those same things in Star Trek. Uh, you know, I I still haven't seen any of the new movies like Into Darkness and all that stuff, but I I want to see them just as a fan so I can bitch moan and complain about everything that isn't like the original series is uh, you know next generation, uh, the the original series you know all that good stuff. But anyway, I, I, I've gone on a lot of rambling. Uh, we, we did a little bit of progress, but there's, there's there's so much little stuff to do. I think what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, an extended break while we continue to. Oh my! I lost a unit. Uh, I lost a musketman. That's not good. I got a little bit overzealous, and my musketman that was escorting this great general got destroyed by the city and the encampment district and the crossbowmen and the musketmen and all the other units surrounding him. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break for a significant number of turns because what we're going to do in the next uh, 27-ish turns is we are going to we're going to work towards getting our army fully upgraded. All right, and then, and then because that's going to take a significant amount of time and a significant amount of turns, where not too much is happening, you know, we'll, we'll just skip over it. So for now, as always, the name of the game is Civilization VI. Name of the channel is iBlueAirJGR Gamer for Comedy. I hope you've been enjoying because I've been enjoying as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.